Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After Etc. and welcome back to another resin project. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make this little resin pumpkin with this adorable little resin pumpkin mold. <laughs> so I really like that this particular mold had all of these details. There is a little sunflower, all these little cheetah print uh, dots pattern. I just thought it was really cute. I designed an entire sign around this uh, with my Welcome to the Patch SVG. You can follow that video down below. I made it with my Cricut and I made it to the right size that this little guy is going to interact with it and be a 3D element, which is always my favorite way to do signs. <laughs> Cricut and resin. But today we are mainly going to be focusing on mixing resin, pouring it into the mold, and making this little pumpkin. Uh, I'm really excited to get started on this one. He is the same kind of coppery orange, but I used copper and rose gold. The rose gold that I use looks a little orange with the copper, but it's definitely not, you know, a bright orange kind of uh, pumpkin feel. I'm not a huge person who likes orange, and so I like to lean towards those warmer autumn tones. They go really well with the pinks and the lighter pastels in my house while still looking fall. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Of course, you can do any colors you like in this mold, but I'm going to be showing you how to make this copper and rose gold pumpkin. Go ahead and start mixing our resin. For our resin today, we are going to be using Maker Poxy, which is perfect when you are doing uh, any kind of craft projects. So, the main goal for this is you are going to be using equal parts of part A and part B. So whether you're doing 50 milliliters or 500, we'll use equal portions. So 25 of part A and 25 of part B, or 250 of A and 250 of B. I use these larger bottles with the pumps because when you're pouring in large portions, it's a lot easier than pouring them by hand. But if you're doing small projects, say this is your first resin project, you may get just the smaller bottles and use smaller portions. Now, because I'm doing a big pour, I'm using a big silicone cup to mix in with a big silicone spoon. You can use smaller cups and even popsicle sticks or disposable cups. I have quite a few of these uh, tiny cups. This one holds 200 milliliters, so even 50 in this cup would be just fine for the projects we are doing today. So right now we should be yep, right around 50 milliliters. So for our summit sign, that is more than enough. Go ahead and mix it. You'll mix for three minutes, stirring evenly, scraping the bottoms and the side. But like I said, I am working on several projects. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep going. And I will be back in a second once this guy is all mixed up. Now, if this is your first resin project, Make sure you are safe. I am working outside with proper ventilation. If you can't work outside, an open window, a fan, um, a respirator is always perfect. I will link the ones I use down below. You also want to make sure you have gloves on. As far as resins go, this one is safe but all resins are toxic to some degree. So you'll want to take the proper safety precautions and then you're good to go. Same as if you were painting a room, you want to use gloves, respirator, everything that you might need for breathing and fumes. So, all right, I'll see y'all in a minute.
All right, it has been about four minutes. We're gonna go ahead and pop all the bubbles that come to the top. And now we're going to set this aside for just a second. The bubbles will keep rising to the top and we're gonna get our colors ready. some pink. These are just craft paints, acrylic craft paints. You want to do about 10% paint to uh, resin. You can do a little more, but it will start to mix kind of funny. And while you can use all kinds of mica powders and alcohol inks, there are all kinds of different things you can use to mix into your resin. You do want to probably test most of what you're using. Not all craft paints will bond properly with your resin. While uh, things like mica powder or alcohol inks that are mint, that are made to mix with resin, will do a better job. This is a Tester's brand paint. It is a craft paint. Um, you use it really for hobby things like uh, model trains. My dad's huge on model trains. I grew up making little houses and things with him. And so this, I mean, it just gives you the best, most metallic look. Love it. I'm going to do a little bit of this metallic rose gold. You always want to make sure you mix or shake. As pretty as this paint is for most projects, I don't like how it looks in resin. And that is another thing to learn is that the paint will not necessarily look the same it does uh, once it's cured in resin as it does in the bottle. So before you do a huge piece, always best to test. All right, we are also going to be using these rose gold flakes, but we'll be adding those right to our design as well as probably into some of the clear at the end. So I'm not gonna do an individual cut for these. Instead, I'm gonna go ahead and start pouring this into our cups. While it is easier to mix all our resin in one and then disperse it amongst the paint, it is, um, risky because our resin being all together in one bucket will start to cure fast. The more resin in one spot, the hotter it gets, hotter it gets, faster it cools. So we want to go ahead and separate this out into smaller cups so we have a longer work time. need a paper towel. We're going to try to put about 100 milliliters in each of these cups for our different projects that we're doing. Like I said, we're going to need very little for the actual gather sign. Um, and then the other four or five molds I'm doing will need more. Try not to wipe as much resin as we can. We can always add more resin to the cups, so it's always best to kind of start with a moderate amount and then move on. All right. Like I said we don't need as much in that one, so we've left about half in here. I think we're going to need more than that, but make it work. Make sure we put the parts with the silicone dripping down on our silicone mat. Protect our table. Now let's stir these up. You can add more paint if you need it. The more paint you add, the more uh, solid or opaque that color is going to be. The less paint you add, the more transparent it will be. Okay, 
pink. This is for our nutcracker. You guys are following along over at the summit, the Christmas uh, Cricut Craft Fest, and you want to check out all these other projects I'm talking about, you can head over to my YouTube and all of the videos will make their way there. But if you are at the Craft Fest, you're probably only interested in our little gather sign because he's going to be so cute. As we mix, it is going to help those micro bubbles come to the top, but the faster you mix, the more bubbles you're going to introduce. So still slow and steady. looking good. Let's go ahead and pop all the bubbles that have risen. You can really see them in this uh, copper. The uh, oil based of that tester's paint really brings the bubbles to the top. The thinner the layer of resin, the easier the bubbles are to pop. So, you know, I'm just going to keep popping them as we pour all our different resins. All right, let's start pouring. All right, so as you can see, I already went ahead and put black in all of those little crevices. I wanted this guy to really stand out. And so I just used a pipette to put black paint in all of those spots and then I used a toothpick to kind of push it around. You could also wait and paint the front afterwards, but I like it when the paint and the resin are incorporated. So let's go ahead. And we are going to just pour some of this kind of in a few different spots. So we want it to mix with the other colors. And a bunch right there. There we go. Now we'll do our lighter color. sure that they intermix. And we'll do about uh, 50 milliliters total in this mold. We don't need to really fill it all the way to the top. We don't need a full two inch thick pumpkin. We really just need enough of a pumpkin to go on our little sign. Do some more of this guy. Getting close. So now I'm going to go ahead and actually do a little bit of this in its own cup instead of waiting. And doing it at the end. Now let's just do. Thought I had dropped some uh, paper towels in there. I dropped flakes. Flakes are fine. All right. 
So we want to chop those flakes up as we stir so that they're smaller. You don't necessarily just want big chunks. Perfect. Let's go ahead and hit this guy. this guy. And now the clear often will push the other colors aside so that they all interact, which is what we want here. There we go. Perfect. I'm gonna just kinda help those colors blend a little. And now we will set this guy aside for 24 hours to cure and we'll see how spooky he looks tomorrow. I can't wait. All right, it has been 24 hours and this guy is completely cured. So you can see from the side here that it's about an inch wide mold. I kept saying two inches, but he's about an inch tall um, and 50 milliliters fills them about a third of the way. So if you wanted to pour this entire mold, you need about 150 milliliters of resin. Since we just needed a thin boy to go on our sign, this should be perfect. Now to unmold him, we're just gonna start pulling back on the silicone to introduce air. I'm gonna kind of free him all around and then we can start slowly uh, peeling back the front, the front with all those little cheetah print divots and sunflower spots will have to be released a little at a time. And as you can see, all our paint should be on our resin. Oh my God, it's so pretty. Ooh. I love it. There are a few spots up here that are like Strange. I don't know if that's uncured resin or what, but it's kind of scraping with my nails, so. There we go. Good enough. Either way, look at that black paint. So this is why we went ahead and we put our paint in all of those little spots so that we would really have that big difference between the two colors. And I love, you can see in a few spaces here, 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 you can see where that light is coming through and that is where that clear resin is. So if we hadn't done the clear resin, it would all be this coppery, beautiful copper color that you see on the right. Ooh, that's pretty, okay. Let's go ahead and put it on our little sign. Oh, that's nice. You can really see the cheetah print. I think like, I think we might cross the W. Oh, that's cute. I'm glad we went with the copper because I wanted it to definitely contrast with the sign. Now, the only other thing we could have done was instead of black, we could have done white to really contrast but I just wanted it to be spooky, you know? Spooky. Look how spooky that is. I love it. So we'll use a bit of super glue to fix this guy to our sign and he is all set. We can go literally hang it on the wall. So I hope you liked this project. It was really fun and easy. If you want a full tutorial on how to do the black, on how to use that pipette to get into all those nooks and crannies, let me know. Um, I've done other 
videos on adding paint to the fronts of things and into the crevices, but I've never done one with the pipette because it's just so simple. You just literally, you know, drop the paint into the crevices. So if you want a full tutorial on that, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and go stare at this sign for a little while. I hope you liked this and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.